everyone! Welcome to Cantor Horses Club here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Edutainment Network. I'm Corey, and joining me today is Angel. Hello. Uh, let's see. A couple things to go over. Uh, it's post desert bus, so my brain is made of soup. And uh, I have tunes to play again i'm going to try using the obs uh beta audio source audio capture from application so Ooh. yeah only stream can hear these bleep bloops what if i want to hear them too too bad okay i don't have that technology <laughs> uh and uh Angel has prepared a slideshow for us, a presentation to introduce our topic. Are you ready, Angel? Yes. All right. Here we go. All right. Today on Cantrell Horses Club, we are going to talk about texture. Ooh. Thank you for the lovely sound effects. Uh, texture is the feel of a surface as you can see by this lovely faux leather background from Adobe Stock. In art, there are two types of texture, as evidenced by this uh, lovely piece of art. We have real texture, where you can actually touch and feel, and we have simulated texture, where you make an illusion. Oh, so that's a single piece. It's not two side-by-side -side pictures. And yeah, they've correct. got sticks glued to it. Yes, on the right. Well, there's sticks glued on both sides, but on the left side, there's also simulated sticks. Real texture can be created by a technique called impasto, where you build up the paint until it is forms stiff peaks like a meringue. Uh, you can use interesting objects like this wolf made of forks uh, to get a uh, spiky texture. Um, or you can do use a fur to recreate classic paintings like this version of Scream created by Merit Yildirim. Simulated texture uh, is what we're going to be more focused on today because uh, I believe Corey's going to do digital art and you can't really do real texture. I digital. can make a fork wolf. <laughs> <laughs> It'll still be a simulated texture. What if I use real pictures of forks? What about that? It's still simulated. Uh, so simulated texture isn't uh, relegated to digital art. Um, for example, this uh, sculpture of marble is made to look like fabric and flowers and skin. Uh, we have this elephant, which shows how wrinkly it is, despite the paper still being flat. And um, this really creepy guy uh, who is judging you, but his uh, curly beard and fur uh, still is... Uh, very fantastic. Yeah, he looks like a Hieronymus. <laughs> yeah, does he? Yeah. But why? Why do we want to include texture in art? One reason is that it enhances realism. So this is a picture of a cat. It is cat shaped. It is cat colored. It is cat sized. But it's missing a thing that gives you an emotional and tactile response, which is cat texture. Um, so this is Jigglypuff uh, from Pokemon, if you didn't know. Um, when they use Jigglypuff in a real environment, they kind of don't fit in because they're flat against all this real textured surface. I'm sorry, chat. We're going to get Jigglypuff texture. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> so when, when they brought Jigglypuff to life in Detective Pikachu, they made them textures. You could see the fur. There's a little bit of skin nub. Thank and, you for uh, that. And the uh, the very glossy eyes. This this is the, the version they went with. Uh, but there was a, uh, a rejected version. Um, that was more horrifying. 
Um, but you can see they still were adding texture to make P make a Jigglypuff fit into the real environment better. But why? Why do we want to add texture? Because it conveys intent. So here we have Aerith from Final Fantasy VII original. Um, you can see there is no texture. She's all flat. And if you uh, turn her to black and white, you can see even further how flat and fake she looks. What is she made of? All of these things, they look like they're all made of the same thing. <laughs> Is she is she plastic? Rude. I don't know. So much shade. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when they remade Final Fantasy VII using the advent of additional technology called texture, uh, you can see there are things about her that are different. Even if she's in black and white, you can clearly see there's hair and suede and cotton and leather and rubber. But why? Why do we want to add texture? Because it affects our emotions. As you can see from this very scientific chart, um, soft and smooth texture equals a positive emotion and rough and hard texture equals a negative emotion. Now it doesn't affect emotion as much as color does. So you have to use them in concert. That's what this red line means. So there's an example. On the left, we have a soft and smooth texture. We have calm water and uh, soft grass. Even the, the wood um, is kind of blurred out. And then on the right, we have a similar scene where there's sharp rocks and rocky water, um, and it evokes more of a negative emotion. There's also subversive texture. So you can use textures to evoke uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are we evoking here, Angel? What does this make you feel? Absurdism. This is ridiculous. It, uh, there, this was uh, created to uh, make fun of the opulence of uh, the aristocracy where they were put, just putting fur on everything. Um, 1936? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. everything was fur back then. <laughs> but why do we want texture no i'm sorry i'm out of i'm out of wise um how how do we make texture uh the trick is variations in value so this is the ping pong ball but we are going to use texture and magic to turn it into something else if you say so we're gonna add dark shapes to simulate shadows the surface casts on itself. And we're gonna add light shapes to simulate the reflections off of the surface. And suddenly, <laughs> it is now a golf ball. We've transformed this object. So this is a painting um, that you could actually see in the Cincinnati Museum of Art. Uh, this is a painting that I actually saw when I was a kid. I went there very frequently because that was the closest art museum to where I lived. And I always found the texture very interesting. You can actually go to the Cincinnati Museum of Art website um, and you can zoom in a lot on many of their paintings, including this one. So we are going to take a look at the peach and the leaf very closely to see how it, they got this fuzzy texture. So we're gonna enhance, and enhance some more, and enhance some more. Um, and also we're going to grayscale it so you can see it is not the color that causes the texture, it is the changes in value. You could see the very subtle variations makes the peach look fuzzy. So how do you do this? We have um, transition. So the way that the values move from light to dark, if it is a gradual transition, then your surface appears to be matte, not shiny. If it is an abrupt transition, then it makes your surface appear to be glossy. And I use um, just the gradient tool in slides 
to to make these examples. So you might be able to do some of that in your digital magic. <laughs> I could do that. That one thing. You do all of these things. Um, so contrast. This is the difference between the light, lightest value and the darkest value. If you have a low contrast, your surface appears dull. And if you have a high contrast, your surface appears reflective. And finally, quantity. So the number of transitions between your values. If you have few transitions, your surface appears smooth. And if you have many transitions, your surface appears bumpy. So today we're going to do some texture practice. Uh, we're gonna do this by observation. I have a bunch of different things that we can observe very closely. And then we're going to execute. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> um, so the way you do this is you pick a shape, any shape, and then you make that shape in uh, a variety of different materials. All right. So you can choose an orb. Uh, you can choose a cube. Uh, you can choose a dog. Anything you want. Okay, I was going to jokingly choose an elephant, but I think orb might be better for me. <laughs> Uh, I've seen cones, I've seen cylinders. Uh, I was thinking about doing like a heart, so we'll see. Uh, and that, that concludes the presentation. It was a lot, thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, what are we observing? Uh, okay, so I have a box of things. You have a box of things. Yeah. Um, you have my camera up somewhere somewhere okay oh you have i have my face cam okay so i have this box um so the box is a good example uh it's like a bamboo uh weave and it's got um flower uh like sewn into it with some sort of plasticky string but there are also a bunch of things inside of the box so I gathered things from around my house that I thought had interesting textures. Um, I have a piece of uh, lapis lazuli, I think. Okay. I have um, this metal uh, thing that I made for a Princess Zelda costume with a gem in it, a sparkly gem. Da, 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 da. There we go. So this is brass and a, a faux ruby, a lab created ruby is what that is. Uh, we have some leather that has a shiny side and a suede side. I have a fake flower. I have a real feather. Uh, I have this, uh, the stone, uh, pointer for my very fancy Ouija board that's got two different um, textures as it's like carved into it. Uh, oh, I have this huge tassel <laughs> that came with my house. I think it's ugly, so I was hiding it, but it might be useful here. Uh, we got some high grit sandpaper. Uh, I have a ceramic ocarina don't ask me to play it that will be very bad um, we have the uh, grip of a shoe so you're less slippy uh, I have a fake plastic gem I have a glass pearl uh, there's a marble I have an eraser. So, those are all the things in the box. There are also things outside of the box, but uh, uh, that, that might be enough things. I'm, I'm so glad you've gathered these all together in this <laughs> box for us. Well, they're not in the box anymore. Now they're all over the desk. Oh, no. They've become <laughs> uncontained. 
I'm especially curious about the shoe slippy thing. The shoe slippy thing? Yeah. That's just the sole of a shoe. Uh, so this is an extra thing you add to shoes that don't have a good grip. So you peel this part off and it's sticky and you stick it yes. to the bottom. And you have one of them. Well, I didn't need to get two for the other ones in the other room. <laughs> okay, okay, so you have two. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> they, 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 they did come as a pair. Yeah, it well, it came like four of them and I've already used two, so. All right, we're good. No further questions. <laughs> I definitely won't ask you to play the ocarina. <laughs> definitely. Just, I tried it last night um, just to see if it worked. And my son's home for Thanksgiving and he was in the living room and he, he came in here to see if I was okay. Because <laughs> the noise is so terrible. Not even one? Just one little doot? One, one doot? <laughs> It's part of the texture. We won't really understand unless we observe the object fully. <whistles> yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I wanted. <laughs> the saccharina has actually been broken and glued back together. You see the, the break there. That just adds to the texture. It does. Uh, all right. So, um, what what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, I guess you're going to shove something in a box, and we're going to look at it. All right. What uh, would you like to need to shove into the box first? Well, I don't know how good your resolution is, so a bigger thing is probably better. Uh, oh, the tass the tassel the is tassel's the biggest big. Thing. Yes. Let's start with the big, big, ugly tassel that came to your house. <laughs> All right. All right. You're going to have to get your DMs off the screen. Oh, okay. That's probably a good idea. It's probably a good idea. Yeah. Now we can see the box uh, here. All so, right. yeah, we've cropped the box view so it's in the middle of your, your, your desktop, just in case the <laughs> physics of this view upset people. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Nothing. <laughs> All right, uh, the camera's frozen. Oh no! Uh, I have to do that. There we go. Ah. Oh, shiny! So, what part of the tassel do you want to see? Uh, what's the easiest part of a tassel to draw? Well, I guess I'm applying this to a sphere, so it doesn't even matter. I'm just trying to make it look shiny. Let's get 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 the knot closer. Okay. There we go. Yeah. All right, and right. then I need to replace the light source. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's hiding from, like, the cops. <laughs> <laughs> like, the flashlight beam of light going over. It's just like... It's hiding on the floorboards. <laughs> uh, huddling. <laughs> like that shot they use in every Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've also got a tiny bit of lens flare in there. Um, can I do anything about that? Uh, yeah. better? Yeah, that's better. Sweet. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be working in acrylic paint today. All right. I'm going to hit the tunes. Let me know if I need to adjust the volume. Probably need to pull it down a bit. Just, yeah, a little. There. Now it's like a little ambient. Assuming it's coming across on stream. Oh my goodness, that would be such a pain. Uh, I can't hear the tunes. You're never going are they, to. Are they good tunes? It's a it's a lovely musical thing uh, that is happening. All right, I'm gonna try to get my canvas on camera at the same time as the tassel. Yeah. 
somewhere in this mess. I got it. Aha! I have a compass to make circles. Oh, I guess I have to use an ellipse tool to make my circles. Or I could freehand circles, considering I'm such a pro now. You could do that. I'm oh, just man. ready to let me hoist myself by a batard. You know what? I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll just draw a bunch of circles. Okay. I'm sure that's lovely ASMR. I'm not going to put mine in a nice grid. They're just going to be random circles. All right. So I'm going to start with a big brush and then get smaller for deets. Because this is shiny. So mm -hmm. I need... A tool that makes shiny. Yes. Yes. <laughs> shiny means you're going to have a large difference between the lightest value and the darkest value. And a uh, abrupt transition between the two. Uh, what did I do with my water? Yeah. That's your cat yeah. water. I know this is my cat water, but it's the only water at my desk. <laughs> Do you need to get water? Uh, well, I don't know what happened to the cup. I have the special paint cup that I won in our Christmas quiz. <laughs> Which is the whole thing. I'll just use the cat water. I'll replace it later. <laughs> So we're kind of a light brownie. Yeah, I'm gonna get some different colors on my palette. I'm gonna use Naples yellow hue. Disregard the ant. Oh yeah, that's a special game we have for chat. Uh, Angel has ants, so keep an eye out. <laughs> so we'll just be keeping score on how many you see during stream and uh there are no prizes there's prizes <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'll get your own cat water i don't know what we could offer people <laughs> um all right so i've got two different kinds of yellow I also want some unbleached titanium. Which I have a big tube of. Because I use it a lot. Alright, so that's, that's what I'm going to start with. Trying to decide if like okay, so I'm making an orb or a sphere or a circle. I'm making a two-dimensional slice of a three-dimensional object, but that three-dimensional object is is it like a big thread or is it all threads? So it's just a collection of threads. I don't know. Um are you making a two-dimensional slice? Usually what you want to do is make a three-dimensional uh, object as if it were made of the texture that you're looking at because then you get practice doing okay. form it's not a and slice texture. it's a projection it's a two-dimensional projection on my computer monitor which is legitimately <laughs> actually flat it is well so is my canvas all right i have made my object yellow first steps yeah all right first step 
and then it's like and really then... super shiny. I'm gonna add shadows bit. first. I like to do shadows and then highlights. Okay. You don't have to do what I do though. I'm trying to do what you do. <laughs> Shadowy. Yeah, so I'm using ivory black, which is a transparent black. So I'm gonna do the overall form shadow first. So like if my light is coming from the top, uh, the bottom is gonna be shadowy, regardless of the texture. And the top is super duper shiny because it's so shiny. No, this is this is too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's like abort, abort, abort. <laughs> it's not working. Wait, wait, let me see what you're doing. Uh that seems fine. It does. Yeah, you just have to do some blending. Just have to between... do some blending. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh if you saw what I did was I painted um, the bottom black and then I wet my brush to do the blending. So I think in digital um, you can use the blur or the smudge tool to get your blending in or <clears throat> you can change which brush that you paint the color on with to have a, a blurrier edge. Uh, looking for the smudge. The, uh, the tool selection in Krita is a little weird. I've never used Krita. Yeah, they have like a little graphical representation of the tools, but they, uh, of course show you what like the real one looks like. So I've got options between like a blending stick or a Q-tip. Oh yeah. Um, either of those would work just fine. I hope so. I'm about to find out. Oh yeah. That looks great. Which one is that? That one is the Q-tip. If I were doing pencil, then I could show you how that works in real life, but Q-tips don't work on acrylic paint. It just soaks up the paint instead. Um, I need my white. Okay. All right, so now I'm adding my highlight, my form highlights, rather than my texture highlights. You gonna do like little, little thready highlights? Yeah, that's how you get texture. <laughs> little things. But the form should uh, override the texture. Like in the shadowy area, of the sphere even the the raised highlighted parts of the texture will be shadowy all right i have a yellow sphere now okay I'm going to switch my paintbrush to a smaller paintbrush. Teeny tiny. Little so this fuzzies. one I was using a number six flat brush for the base. Uh, now I'm going to use, what is this? A 10-0 round brush. Tiny little brush. My brush is literally too small to see. That might be too small to use. Smaller the better. The form will win. <laughs> it's true. Alright, so I'm looking for the darkest shadows of the texture. And I'm gonna add... No, I don't want to paint on that brush. Add the lines. Oh.
Oh, so you're starting with the light. Yeah. Just making a little hairy ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly hairy, though. Ready. Braid. <laughs> Scraggly. You're being mean to it. The large ugly tassel that came to your came with your house. The one yes. that you call ugly. <laughs> I didn't call it scrangly. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, cropulent word. Oh no, I went too dark with my shadowy ones. Oh no. Oh no. All is lost. You have an undo button. I'm never gonna learn if I just keep fixing my mistakes. That's how learning works! <laughs> Uh, all right. You provoked me into that response. <laughs> I've fallen into your trap. Yeah, you came on the show. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It looks great. <laughs> No, I just need to, uh, make it round again. <laughs> no, that's too big. Mine looks kind of like fish scales. Oh, there we go. Ta-da! That's the perfectly valid technique in digital art. It really is. <laughs> Although you can do that ahead of time and just put a mask on so you never paint outside the lines. Mm, nope. No. This way's much more satisfying. <laughs> oh no. What is Anubis trying to show me? Ah! Control Z erasers. Yes, thank you. For IRL control Z. There you go. Actually, Angel, you've got an eraser. You have all of the same technology I have. An eraser doesn't work on paint. Um, I, I'm but, pretty sure, according to my computer, it does. The water does. I can show you. I'll make a mistake and then I'll fix it. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's let's put some green on this. All right. Oops, I put green on my ball. What shall, oh, ever no. shall I do? Whoa. Let's just get rid of it. Huh. All better. <laughs> All right. Uh, what if I just move this? No, oh, that's not the move button. I'm trying to find the button that lets me move things. Uh, is that the arrow keys? <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> and we'll select shapes tool. Is that gonna? No. Uh. The one that looks like a cross. There we go. I'm gonna name this layer circle and then uh, lock it. Oh, 
What does that do? Stop me from mucking with my circle. <laughs> I'm gonna try and make another. Now that I've mastered one ball. Uh, are you gonna find textures around your house? Oh! Uh... I don't think there's any textures in my house. Not a one? Not a single one. Huh. Um, Must be a boring house. It really is. It's all, like, plastic, like PS1 era. Plastic is a texture. No, no. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's boring. Boring textures are still textures. Take up close ups of all of the dust piles I have. <laughs> Could just grab Ian's very shiny trackball. I think I'd have to take a picture and then get it onto my computer to do this. Maybe after the break. You can just observe it in real life. Chad doesn't have to see it. Oh, so you want me to just draw stuff that's in my house and then tell you that I got it correct. Yes, I think I can do that. <laughs> I mean, I, I was thinking in some ways I might benefit from, you know, practicing and trying, trying again, but... You would do that? A real uh, sharp edge. And Nubis said... Uh, no, no, no. Space Potato said, I think they have texture disabled to save memory. Yep. Which is, which is an interesting thing. Um, because that's how the human brain works. Like, <laughs> it's, it's... Normally, when you look at a thing, it's very difficult to actually perceive what is making the texture. You have to force your brain to pay attention. And then, like, as soon as you look away, your brain immediately erases it. Like, this is unimportant. Yep. Believe that. And it also only matters for, like, a really narrow band of your vision. So yeah. when they get eye tracking in to, uh, to offload, or at least to go to the like, low level of detail outside of your thing. Sort of like uh, when those Frustum Calling uh, GIFs and videos became very popular recently. It's like that, but even narrower. I hear cats! Yeah, cats are trying to break in. They want to well, go into the box. That's I want to go in the texture cat. box. You know, if you're one of your cats went in the texture box. <laughs> hey, Loki was in it earlier. Then we could have we could have a whole new texture. Yeah. If it'll sit still. Eventually she'll go away. She'll give up. <laughs> right? Yep. I can't, Eric the Orange, I can't let the babies in. They're so destructive. <laughs> you know chat just wants to see them, right?
Yeah, yeah I change. know. It's all clicky. Are you not using the trackpad? I was. Did you switch? I was holding the mouse to pick my brush, but yeah. I'm trackpadding. I'm trackpadding, I swear. <laughs> oh, you do whatever you want. It's just harder with a mouse. Is it? Yes. Hmm. I guess that depends on how you learn. Actually, yeah, because... I grew up very mouse heavy. Yeah, trackpad is, or the tablet is like more like traditional. Yeah. Hopefully, the music is drowning out the cat. Nope. <laughs> the music's even louder for me than it is for chat, but no, it's not. It's really not. I see you caved first. That's a very satisfied cat. Job well done. Yeah. If I wasn't streaming, I would have just let her suffer. <laughs> that sounded bad. <laughs> Hello. Aw, infinite suffering. Here we go. That's yep. Right. We have to look at the cat now. I can't even spray you with water right now. It's filled with paint. Don't step in the paint. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. Chat, meet kitten. Yep, her name is Kitten. She's once again my smallest cat. It was a little weird for a while when she wasn't. But she didn't like that. Interlopers. <laughs> nope. She hated them. I'm only going to pet you with one hand. Deal with it. She's also happy because other cats are not in here. Yeah. She gets to pretend to have your undivided attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alright, I'm going to add some white now. I'm going to use a different kind of white paint. This is... Golden Artistic Color Titanium White. Oh. Which is more opaque than the Liquitex Basics Titanium White. You gonna do uh, more? Or is this like, just for like the teeny tiniest amount of, of hairs, I guess? Uh, well, this is for the highlight on the bumpy parts. So I used the regular white, or the Lycotex Basics white, to do the highlight on the sphere. Right. 
And I'm going to use the brighter white to do the highlight on the tiny little texture bumps. So like here. Yeah. Sit down. Eric the Orange says, cohabitating cats seem to have two modes, inseparable cuddle bugs are barely to tolerating roommates. Yep. Um, yeah, in within the same cat, even. She is not always this cuddly. Sometimes she hides under the bed. So you definitely went <clears throat> for like the weave pattern, not chunk on yours. Yeah, I well, so I'm doing uh, the top. The I can't even tell what part of this. Can I point at it? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, if you do, they might not be able to see because it might be behind my head. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing the part that's below the rope and b above the tassel. Yeah. Between the two chunky parts. <laughs> Which part were you doing? Uh... Just, like... The, the thread itself. The, the, the tassel part. Yeah. I think you needed... Uh, or you need longer shadows. Longer shadows. Yeah, because right now it just looks fuzzy. Yeah. But like the threads. There, I'll, I'll paint one. Okay. <laughs> I will do the Tesla part as well. Uh, I'm going to start this one off with unbleached titanium. And then I'm going to use, what is this, a round number three. So to get the hair, you want to do long shadows. Ah. Uh. I got gotcha. you. So this is the shadows cast by the threads on each other. And then the shape of the sphere will become apparent if the shadows are darker on one side. 
Ooh, what are you making now? Orb. Yeah, but out of what? Orb. <laughs> okay. It's Ian's trackball. <laughs> ah, okay. Is that... Does it have the black dots all over it? No, it's sparkly. Oh. It's just a smooth... It's like a billiard ball. But... Which I also have. I could also grab a billiard ball, but it's it's just like a really shiny, hard, sparkly thing. Just got too many light sources in my room. Mmm. Like well, that's why four. I have the box. <laughs> yeah. That's why I have the box. Well, some of us can't afford boxes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Shame. Tassily yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, I think I'm going to switch the object in the box to a different object. Okay. Um, what object shall I choose? Does chat have in a preference? Dear chat, do you remember the objects that Angel prepared earlier? <laughs> you didn't know there'd be a quiz. You should always know there's going to be a quiz when I'm involved. Cat. Uh, the big one. is the big one. Uh, well, there's the box itself. The box itself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I kind of want something that's not beige, though. Yeah, right? Uh, crystal thing? Uh, this hunk of rock? Yeah, hunk of rock. I can use the bottom side. Unless the cat wants to get in the box. Yeah, now that it's an option. <laughs> I mean, I painted so many cats. <laughs> I might be able to do it from memory at this point. There we go. At the bottom of my hunk of amethyst. Oh, I had it for 
a second. There it is. Aha! Oh, that is chunky. Nice. Yeah, so I'm gonna get... I'm gonna use this green that I got out for the example. Yes. My example undo. <laughs> So right now, the ball looks kind of rubbery. A little bit, but then I think I want to add like a hard spot on it. Mm-hmm. Because this thing isn't... Like, it's, it's hard because it's got kind of a mirror finish on it. Like, I can see my reflection in it, but mm -hmm. it's very shiny. Yep, so you definitely want reflections with a hard or a highlights of a hard edge. Yeah. But other than that, it like it's very smooth. Uh, Anubis would just water work for the shiny area. Um, I mean, when you're doing watercolor, you can use water to, like, erase, like I showed before, but you can use it in a less destructive manner. Um, acrylic will only do that while it's wet. Once it dries, it's harder to erase, so... Usually just use white or a lighter value of the same color. Oh, we have a raid. Welcome, good day, internet. Today we are trying to make texture look good drawings. <laughs> Words in that order. Uh... We have a light box, and we're trying to make circles with the texture. But uh, I'm drawing this orb, because <laughs> I'm hilarious. I'm drawing a rock, because I am not. Because <laughs> you're not hilarious. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. There, <laughs> that's my light. <laughs> I think you didn't go with a pure white. No. So the 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 more white it is, the shinier it will look. It's very close to. Mm-hmm. It's just not white. I don't like going pure white or black. Completely. Yeah, that's definitely more lifelike. Very few things in life are pure white or black. So I'm using uh, the flat brush uh, for the texture on this one, and I like bounce with the corner to get kind of fuzzy edges right. on my shadows. Oh no, I made a weird face. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Quick, do something to make it no longer look like a face. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Add more face parts. Uh. <laughs> no, that's the wrong direction. Uh. I 
looks like mint chocolate chip. Uh, well, that's okay because it's not done yet. <laughs> but at the end, it's definitely not gonna look that way. Correct. Mm -hmm. But it is time for us to take a break and th show some commercials. Already? Well, that went fast. Yeah, sorry. Right. I even pushed it a little <laughs> bit long, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I will uh, seek my actual water cup during the break. Yeah, clean out the cat water. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, we'll be back shortly. Please enjoy silence. And then commercial. Bees. 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 Welcome back, everybody, to Can't Draw Horses Club. I'm Corey. Here's Angel. Today we are drawing texture. Uh, I am also playing music. Tunes! All right. Um, so I think my my shiny, shiny red orb is finished. It's so shiny. You should do the mask to make it perfectly round again. Mm, no, I shouldn't. Oh. Okay. It's it's just lumpy. <laughs> like me. Alright. I'm painting um, the bottom of a rock. Oh, well, the bottom of a geo. The top is a, a crystal and amethyst, but uh, the bottom is green and lumpy. <laughs> yeah. See, you wouldn't crop your lumps. Would you? I might, if I could do that in real life. I mean, you could lay down mask beforehand, do like liquid mask. Oh, that's so much work. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, after being bullied, I sc scrounged around my house for textures and I found a sponge! Was that bullying? Totally. Completely. My poor feelings. My emotions. <laughs> I took a picture of the sponge <laughs> so that I could look at it. Here, I'll show everyone. Sponge! What makes a sponge a sponge? Nobody knows. It's not the holes? <laughs> It's the holes. Okay. <laughs> Although, artificial sponges, unlike real sponges, have a lot of pockets in them. Because the, the real sponges, the holes go all the way through. Oh, yeah. So they don't collect sponge grunge. They don't get that same spongy, nasty smell. Necessarily. Sponge grunge is the official turn. Is it? No. I can't tell when you're lying. I know. To me. I know. It's probably good that you ask for clarification so you don't go through <laughs> life thinking the things that I'm saying are true. <laughs> I could just uh, flip the switch and assume everything you say is false. Just like that, eh? Wow. Well, that's what I have to do when I watch Wheeler. <laughs> yep. Okay. This appears to be yellow. Is yellow in some parts. All right, I'm gonna add some brown to my rock. Do I want raw umber? Or do I want burnt umber? I think I'm gonna go with burnt umber. Are you rock? Yeah, yeah, that's a burnt umber. It's got like that so, more irony. Yeah, the rust. reddish. Yeah.
let's see, kind of main body shadow first, question mark. It's really average, so kind of averagey. Yeah. And then I blend this to make it look rounder. Well, the blending doesn't make it look rounder. It makes it look smoother because you have a less harsh transition between your values. Yeah. already looking spongy just by coloring it yellow yep <laughs> i see that you're on to me <laughs> uh well you can do a little bit more challenging and do all your textures in grayscale oh that's true i could because then you really have to understand that the value is what is important. like I'm painting planets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe this you should. The, the string planet. This is the rock planet. <laughs> and then you can draw Jupiter. And it'll be like, <laughs> wait. Darker to make spaces. The cat is making the camera shake, by the way, in case you were wondering what was causing that. They're all kind of. Yeah, so you're not drawing the holes, you're drawing the shadows that the holes make. chat right on top of your sponge. I should mute them. It's okay. They're mostly back at commercial talking about the bees. <laughs> oh, right. You played the bees song during the commercial? I've got two different commercial scenes and one of them, they each have different bee songs in them. So I can keep chat on their toes. 
I didn't know there were two B songs. There's two B songs. Call them A and B? No. <laughs> that is not their names. Uh trying to I'd have to I'd have to look. There are bees in the current song too. No, there's no bees in the current song. This is uh background horse noises. That's what this song is called. I'm gonna have to watch the VOD to, uh, hear this music. <laughs> you don't need to. It's, uh, really highly repetitive. Although, I can change it up a little bit right now. Because I'm using, um, one MIDI input as kind of my generator. Um, so the other ones do some arpeggiation on top of that. Uh, oh, so it's not like a pre-recorded song. It's being live mixed? Yeah! It's, it's dynamic, and there's uh, different rules for the different sequence. So there's two different drum grooves that it goes back and forth between kind of irregularly. Uh, and then there's three different notes. But I have the chords and arpeggiation, I think, set to E if I did it correctly. But I can make this like a lot lower. There, there's that. Now it's totally different. Oh, that's horrible. Don't like that. <laughs> oh, oh, bad noises. Bad noises. Don't do that again. There we go. Now it's different. I still hear nothing. I can give you a, it's booty do boot it boot do boot do Perfect. That's what it sounds like. And then there's like doot 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 with the drums. That's what the drums sound like. Alright, I have a mess of white and Brown and black. Do you feel it looks like that rock? Not yet. Okay. But I feel it will look like that rock. Just trust the process. Trust the process. I'm getting out my Mars black to do some darker shadows. Actually, another thing I could do to change the song up is change uh, when the transition happens. I can change it to two bars, and then it'll be a little bit different. How's your sponge? Good. I think I need to start blending just a little bit some of these shadows to get the full kind of shape and then go in with the lighter color to pop them out a bit. 
Yeah, I think for that, it probably would have tried to pick a soft brush because it's going to be very time consuming to blend every one of those little circles. Is there something you can do to blend them all at once? Uh, I could Gaussian blur or do a directional blur, but uh, I think I'd want to do something like duplicate them first so that I could have still a hard edge. Mm. It's not too bad, though. At least at this point. I don't really have enough density on them. There's uh, so much empty space, which is not how the sponge texture works. Yeah. All chunky. Spongy. 100% sponge. progress like it's not good but it's not not what I'm trying to do <laughs> well you haven't added the highlight yet yeah 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 trust the process Corey uh. it's never going to look good until it does yeah that's my problem with with art it's, it takes like five hours to make anything I think that was one of the things that I learned that um, was very encouraging, actually. Really? It's like, I'm not bad at art. I'm just not done yet. Oh, yeah. It's like, if I stop and it's bad, that means I stop too soon. <laughs> Pretty sure if I uh, try something and don't get it right the first time that uh, it wasn't worth doing and I should find a different thing to do with my time. <laughs> Only do things that you're good at the first time. Sorry, that's sarcasm. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that one got away. Curse you, Ant.
Oh, yeah, boobity. That's that's definitely something to understand about how art works, because, like, when you get into learning, you're, you're just like, I made one sketch, and that's the final thing, but you watch other people, and they'll do, like, layers, and be like, here's the sketch, and then I'll do another attempt at it and actually clean up the lines, and then now I'm doing another one, and it's to get the colors in. It's just a lot more involved than one and done. Except for the people that are uh, one and done types. It depends on what uh, sort of end product you're looking for. Like, stick figures are still art. <laughs> it's just, it has to convey your intent. And stick figures are a really good starting point because it at least gives you like something for the form to stick to if you want to clean it up later. Mm -hmm. Well, there's an idea. You could draw stick figures and then make them look like they're made out of sticks. Yep. And then we can actually glue real sticks to them. <laughs> That's art. So one of the things that I'm doing on mine is um, taking advantage of the natural texture of the canvas. Right. So like... Uh, the the brush right now has um, very little water on it and just paint. And I can do like a dry brushing technique, okay. which will leave little spots of the color underneath. Yeah. Which kind of mimics the rocky texture. Okay. That's a thing that um, is sorely lacking in digital art programs. I think um, one of them is starting to do it. With Which textures? It? With a, yeah, like, uh, um, like, like a canvas uh, texture. Clip has that? Yeah, I think that's Frida one. does too. Does it? I think so. But Clip. Clip Studio. Different paper types. Although that does sound like something Adobe would try and then it would just like take a thousand years to render a single line. Have you tried any of like the 3D painting stuff? Um, not recently. Okay. Yeah. It's one of those things where it would just take quite a while to render any, uh, brush strokes which is not fun for artists they no. like to see what they're doing for some reason <laughs> it is helpful I mean when they do um, textures in like 3d animation it's usually simulated texture like uh, like in blender yeah. They're not having artists actually go in and make textures no. on the on the models. 
It's like post-processing shaders. Yeah. Starting to look more rock like, I think. I'm getting a cheese vibe from yours. A little bit. <laughs> I guess cheese has fewer holes than sponges do. Yeah. Like, I really gotta add way more holes. <laughs> you just copy and paste them. I can just copy and paste them. They're on the same layer. Well, that was a mistake. Uh, it's art. <laughs> there are no You're drawing on one layer. I'm drawing on one layer. It's the same. <laughs> it's true. But that means you lose all the conveniences of your technology. That's a feature I think that the digital program should have of like, oops, wrong layer, and just tell it to make a new layer and redo all the paint strokes you just did. <laughs> yeah, it must be really easy to just implement that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they can undo. So you just undo, but remember, create a new layer and then redo. Yeah, just like that. It can't be that hard. Yeah, the only explanation for that not existing is uh, laziness on the developer's side. Or ignorance. Oh, yeah. Because the developers of, of these programs clearly are not artists themselves. Or they would have already thought of that. Yep. Seeing Boopity says it's not the first time they've heard about the feature. How long do I want to spend on this rock? Uh, pretty sure I heard you say you were going to go until it was finished. It's true. It's not finished yet, so more time is the answer. More time. Stick it back in until it's turkey. Oh, I have to make turkey this week. Oh, yeah. I hate touching raw meat. 
Well, then don't. I might ask somebody else to do the turkey. <laughs> I am making everything else, so... It's only fair that someone else help. <laughs> Juliamon says it looks like Majora's Mask's moon. A little bit. But as we know, textures didn't exist until the PlayStation 4. <laughs> Is that? Ah! It's part of your presentation. Well, they had um, they they had pictures, right? They just put a picture on a three D surface and called that a texture. They do call that a texture, yes. But it doesn't like dynamically react to the light like a real texture would. I think you're thinking of a bump map? Yeah. That's another thing about video games is that when you're looking at a 3D model or like even just like a wall, you might be looking at a composite of like five different images that are that contain different information that the engine uses to render like the normals or something like that. Uh, and by normals, I mean uh, the bounce off the surface of the lighting. Yeah, it has to like dynamically figure out all of the things that I would talked about yeah. with the change of values. Cat, stop shaking the camera. <laughs> Shouldn't have tried doing art during cat time. <laughs> but it's always cat time. <laughs> Guess I can't do art. Yep. There is a clip on, on my channel uh, when I had the kittens and they were, they were small of the cat just walking into the middle of my canvas and falling asleep and I was trying to paint around him. Yep. And that's when he was smaller than the canvas, but he's not that small anymore. <laughs> Oh, gross. Um. Do you need to leave? No, I'm good. <laughs> Alright. Just some cat drool on my face. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is fine. You are in the splash zone. All right, I'm no longer in the splash zone. <laughs> All right. 
it back to the old color. Did you save the old color or did you just use the color? I just used the color picker. From a because dead one, spot. Once you do the blending, the color picker is no longer reliable to get you all the way back to your original color. Oh, it's totally and completely reliable. I did it perfectly. I think this the bottom is looking more rock like. I need to go back in with more highlights though. Highlights are bright enough. Compared to the picture. Maybe. <laughs> you know how you can fix that is just go into your curves and increase your uh, contrast. I don't know if anything could actually fix this. <laughs> That's not true. You could actually fix it if you wanted to work on it. We just had this discussion. Uh. What? What? I don't know what that means. Uh, y'all just said cheese grommet. Um, from like Wallace and Gromit. From Wallace and Gromit, and there is an episode of Wallace and Gromit where they go to the moon to get cheese. Oh. Uh, and then I think their rocket ship makes skis out of itself and goes skiing on the cheese hills. But before that, uh, Wallace is very into the idea of getting Winsleydale. I don't know what that is. It's a type of cheese. Oh. Winsleydale! <laughs> Trying to do my the mouth like an Ardman mouth. Oh, the super wide? Yeah, with the the round on the... It doesn't work. <laughs> no, that's not a human thing to do. It's a Cory thing to do. <laughs> you never you never try to imitate, like, chicken run mouths or anything like that? No. Nope. Never... Not once. Chicken pie. Yeah. I've never even seen any Wallace and Gromit or Chicken Run. Like, I know of them. Good. Yes. That's step one. Uh... 
Look, last time you made me watch Pingu. I'm not watching Wallace and Gromit. It's not happening. It's in English, though. <laughs> it's uh, more or less where uh, the company name for Loading Ready Run is Bionic Trousers Media. Yeah. Uh, it's operate as Loading Ready Run. Uh, but Bionic Trousers is from Wallace and Gromit. There's a... Jordan is right. Corey is the bad influence. Yeah. But I'm not a criminal penguin that steals your bionic trousers. There was talk of a chicken run, too. Yeah, I was just thinking that last week. I don't know why. It had something to do with Desert Bus, but I didn't... Uh, make any jokes based on that. I always feel like Chicken Run's the, the more obscure entry uh so making chicken run jokes doesn't really work chicken run is a um hogan's heroes sort of pastiche <laughs> right hogan's heroes yeah yeah we like i hope Flake. you're not asking me Chat's here too, don't worry about it. We've got our our, our external brain hooked up. We're, we're tapped into the hive mind. Oh, yeah. No, I got people playing clicker games. That's I'm definitely a bad person. <laughs> Whew. Aren't all games clicker games if yes. you think about it? <laughs> they are. Thor Sokar, did you think I was making up Chicken Run? It's a real movie! <laughs> I knew it was a real movie. I've not seen it. <laughs> but I knew it was real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's like a very specific... Uh, it's 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 along the same lines as liking cartoons, but there's a very specific like a type of nerd that likes stop motion animation. So they'll be like big fans of like Leica, Ardman, uh, Starburns. All these never all never these heard things. of any of those. Uh, they. I'm pretty sure Starburns is the name of the the company they did Anomaly so with Charlie Kaufman. Which was more puppet than play, but you know. No? No, I don't. Uh Leica did um Kubo, the two strings, ten strings, what is the name of that? Two strings. Two strings. I did see that yes. one. Yeah. Did you watch any of like the behind the scenes footage of them taking like the CG models of their big rigs and then actually laying them out on the table and then getting them to like flow fluidly? No. We should I do stop motion on on this. I've done stop motion can't draw horses. Club? I've done animation, but we could do stop motion. Yeah. Yeah. That that combines the disciplines of um, sculpture and animation. Mm -hmm. It's so time consuming. Yeah. I don't know, Boopity. I think I think animating a horse might be outside of our range. That you're right. It has four legs. No four Is that legs. One, one of the very first animations was the horse with the little thing and it showed how a horse uh, leaves the ground entirely. Yes. It, it's more, more of a jump than a run. And the moment you said that I knew what the word... Zoetrope! There we go. That was a zoetrope. Yeah, the spinny thing. Yeah, the spinny thing. It's 
just one of those things. It's like, there's no difference between taking a sequence of photos and filming something on a camera. Except for, you know, how much work it is. Yeah, because there's the, the machine does it all for you. Who did the Wes Anderson stuff? The uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox and the Isle of Dogs are both stop motion. They're not CG? No. Oh, God, no. Huh. They actually made those little foxes. They're like this big. Oh, and I'm looking forward to the Pinocchio movie. It's, it's not the Pokemon movie that came out earlier. It's the Gamera del Toro one that's coming out soon. Uh, you said po You said Pokemon. Pinocchio? You said Pinocchio the first time. The second time you said it's not the... <laughs> it's not the Pinocchio one that... Name of director... I feel like there's a Z in there. Anyways, that's a stop motion thing too. And I've seen the, the dolls for the for Pinocchio. It's cute. The maquettes. I don't know. I think I would just find them creepy. I have not seen them. You think you would find maquettes creepy? Just Pinocchio just stuff. Just Pinocchio? But it's a really yeah. cute Pinocchio. I, how cute can it be? It's still an inanimate object that walks around and talks. It's kind of creepy. Just the concept is creepy. Little wooden boy. So you don't like, like, Toy Story? The idea of your, your dolls and stuff coming to life when you're not looking at them is... not fun? You ever try to, like, catch stuff moving when you were a kid? I did do that, but that doesn't mean I found it fun. <laughs> <laughs> well... It is time for our second break. <laughs> All right. I wish I could remember the name of the director. I'm sure you'll Google it during the break. No. Anyways, yeah. goodbye. Goodbye. Hello again, everybody. Here on Hit Kit. Hint? Mm. Horse club drawing thing. Angel and I are drawing textures. Uh, and I'm playing music, which I just lowered in my headphones, so I'm going to hit play. Tell me if it's super quiet. Or whatever. Maybe it's the same volume. I don't know. Corey's drawing cheese, and I'm drawing a rock. It's a sponge! <laughs> Maybe I should have built it up from shadow. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's so dense, the, uh, this texture. Yeah, like, there's a lot going on. Um, you could try... There's, like, a spray paint brush that does, like, spatters. I could spray paint, you're right. Wait, I have a sponge brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to work so good. Oh. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't think that's the right color. No, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a sponge now. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right, next. 
No, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm reading chat and I see to Emily say, I have a very vivid memory of when I was very young, watched a mechanical monkey come to life and bang its symbols menacingly on a high shelf with rain blowing from an open window next to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think, a common experience. Those horrifying <laughs> symbol monkeys that are just too loud. They're obnoxiously loud. No one likes them. Why do we have those? We're all gonna have Tamily's Nightmare? Yes! That's what we do here on Horse Club. Uh, <laughs> collective nightmares. We seed everyone's Oops. nightmares. Oh god, where's my... There we go. What is that? Uh, concrete. With Bubbly paint on concrete. it. Or no, those are like rocks in it. It's got it's got a, a grippy treatment. I think I'm doing all right at making my orb look rocky. Um but I think it still looks flat. It doesn't look like a round rock. No, it just looks like you've got colors. So I will work some more on that. Which I guess has a value and transition issue? Mm hmm? Uh, I think that uh, the texture is overriding the form right now. Oh, goodness. Okay. So... My image is gray, mostly. Maybe it's blue. Blue gray, a little bit. You could just color sample the picture. I, I maybe. <laughs> nope. Nope. It's out of out of range. Oh yeah, Photoshop lets you do that. Yeah. Now I'm gonna have to just do what I can. Oh, it's like really smooth and then there's bumpies which have a raised edge around them. And then it's not that they have holes in the middle, it's that the top of the grain is coming through. Or some of them are holes. I think there are other colored rocks. Yeah. Mixed like into the concrete. Brown. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. I'm at the point in my paint where there is a skin formed on top. Uh-huh. I have to, like, squeeze it like a pus. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Uh, <laughs> on, your, on your palette? Yes. <laughs> You've got art zits. <laughs> Me too. Oh, that wasn't even on camera. Mm -mm. Oh. No, we just heard Excuse about me. it. Oh, you're going to do it for us? It. Yeah? It's already squished. It's already squished? Well, until you go back to another uh, yeah, one. Yeah, this one. There we go. Give me some of that brown puss. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. So maybe here's where I use the spray paint or the sponge and then kablam! 
Kablam! Kablam! And oh, I then... thought you were gonna use uh, the dark color. And then I'd have to outline the dark color instead of putting dots in the middle of all my dots. Both of those sound difficult. Oh. <laughs> oh. Unless. Unless. Did, did you make that on a different layer? No. Of course not. <laughs> Correct. A little bit. It's a little bit correct. <laughs> I'll just keep going. Yes, I think in addition to the dot inside of the white color, uh, there's a shadow. Yeah. Which you, if you made the white on a separate layer, you could have duplicated the layer, changed its color, and like moved it up two pixels and had all your shadows. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'm not taking complete advantage of my digital workspace. You're not obligated to, but I thought chat would like to know that neat trick. Oh. You were telling chat. Okay. It's perfect. Behold, chat. <laughs> same picture. They're the same picture. <laughs> so, uh, this appears to be the same problem I'm having, which is your sphere looks flat. It looks like a circle and not a sphere. Well, I can add another layer and then do all my shading on top of it and then <laughs> blend it down if I want. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Oh. <laughs> Through the magic of ivory black paint. Meow. Meow. No, that's not it. I was just like, multiply is only gonna preserve the dark parts. Screen? Overlay. Perfect! It's beautiful. Mm hmm. Yep, I did it. Flawless. Uh, 
Uh, CG Wonder, what does that texture taste like? Since you seem to know. Crunch! Oh! Yeah. Yeah, see? The texture can evoke very visceral reactions. Oh. I flattened everything. Whoops. There. Merge with layer below. That's what I wanted. All right, I'm gonna see if I can salvage this with my uh, Cory like overlay. Yeah. Just throw it on there, everything will work out fine. Oh yeah, it does kind of look like um, the like white chocolate Oreo candy bars. Cookies and cream? Yeah. But not the cookies and cream ice cream. That's more solid than that. All right, does it look more round now? <laughs> it looks more spherical. Oh, actually, yeah. All right, I'm gonna call that texture done. I'm gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna do the ocarina. So this is a ceramic texture. Uh, I can compare it. Yeah. Looks all right. Yeah. Genuinely. Not the fake, yeah. <sighs> I can't. Oh, right on the crack. You can see. Or is that oh, a hair? Yeah. No, that's a, that's a piece of hair. Yeah. I can't. Right. Looks like my ocarina needs to be cleaned. <laughs> it's in blue. Oh, that looks very textury. Yeah, I did what you told chat you could do, which was <laughs> duplicate the layer and scooch it to make shadows. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I did that. <laughs> but now I'm going to eat. It's All right. Food. It's time for uh -huh. breakfast. I'm going to choose this circle because it's on camera. <laughs> Breakfast? <laughs> it's 3.30 in the afternoon. Yes. Yes, it is.
Kitty, I'm not staying in the lines very well. All right, so I'm going to ignore the holes to start with and just try to make this look like it's made out of ceramic painted blue. All right. I've hidden my face so people don't have to see me eating and also um, so they can see the whole ocarina. Uh, you can't really even see the whole ocarina, though. Not really, but <laughs> more Enough. than before. All right, I'm going to get a darker blue. So this has a pretty um, harsh transition between the dark blue and then there's an extra glottiness in the shadow. Mm -hmm. Currently live, let's nope. Nope. Uh, well, the show can be pretty scary sometimes. I think this dark blue is dark enough. On the bottom? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just... Just you wait, audience. We'll get into the asset flipping soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just take something someone else made and then use it as is uh, and uh, charge people for it. That... Also, we'll be accepting money. I mean, we are accepting money, right? Patreon.com slash loading ready run. Maybe. Oh no, I didn't wait long enough for the paint to dry. Oh. I'm being impatient. <laughs> Uh, 
There we go. I've twiddled the music a little bit again. Maybe now it sounds more sinister! You wanted it to be more sinister or less sinister? More! Horror vibes! Just watch out, chat. There's gonna be an animatronic monkey with symbols. Ooh! Don't make promises you can't keep. Then what am I supposed to promise? <laughs> Will you be doing any more texturing? I don't know. I'm trying to uh, find a balance again now that I've got food inside me. I need to do that after this. Yeah. I have to go pick up my son from the dentist, and then we will have some lunch. Because that's what everyone wants to do right after going to the dentist. <laughs> What texture does one get from Symbol Monkey? Uh, let's see. Rough and sharp. Brass. And brass, yeah. But yeah, I have, I have a brass uh, example. It's real, real jaggy so that you feel um, negative emotions. Well, it's got, like, its face is plastic, right? Or, or rubbery? Uh, depends. I feel like there's less consistency in the face than there is in the uh, outfit and little symbols. Across brands of smoky symbols. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the fake fur needs to be painted to look ratty or coarse. Yeah, like a lot of pilling. Like, this monkey was found in a puddle. <laughs> or a ditch. And brought home. Or it walked there itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, my orb is going off the bottom of the screen. Ah, yes. Thank you for adjusting that. Um, actually, I'm going to grab my pile of sticky notes and uh, ask the chat if there's uh, anything they would like to see for Horse Club in December. Mm. You know, ideally stuff that I haven't done yet. So, long-time Horse Club members uh, are probably better to ask. But, you know, if this is people's first time here at the club, uh, maybe they could also drop some suggestions because then they'll be excited to come back, right? Yeah. That's engagement. It's engagement. Bam. And you, you could also ask our YouTube VOD watchers. <laughs> to do anything. To do anything. I think we'd have to have more than, like, five people watching then. There's... Okay, it's not five. There's more than five. They're just watchers that don't like to comment very much. So, zebras from Hosk. I've drawn a zebra before. Uh, bells. Monocolor zebras. The grid method to draw zebras. You haven't done the grid method yet. Uh, Hosk, would you accept one-bit zebras versus monocolored zebras? <laughs> Deliberately try to draw something horror. Okay, horror. Let's try to see if I can find someone that draws horror. Uh, you've done that with Alex before. That wasn't... 
It wasn't horror on purpose? That was no. not the prompt. Monsters? Yes. Okay. A turtle. Ooh. Moons. You're thinking you want more orbs of or s circles of texture, Hosk? Is that what you're asking for? <laughs> Have we done spaceships? We did spaceships. There's plenty of moons that aren't circles. I mean, I don't remember if it was spaceships. I think, okay, no, actually that was bones. And I turned one of the goat skulls into a space spaceship. But I don't think that was... Sometimes spaceships just happen. Uh, but spaceships, I can I can do a specific thing for. I think that's enough. I'll add that to my uh, pile. Actually, I'll get rid of all the, the uh, ones I made for Zeta as well. Goodbye, Zeta! Ah. I hit the trash. How was being on Zeta as opposed to being on Nightwatch? Um, they have very different vibes. Yeah, it was weird because we were the only remote shift. So it was like, there's main desert bus where everyone's in the studio and then they turn out the lights and go home. And then there's us just in our own little corner. Uh, barely interacting except in the form of like banners or cans of olives honestly the shifts in the studio weren't really interacting with each other that much either but they could they could peach was there they had a feud about who kept leaving the lights on that's fair yeah From the viewer perspective, you felt just as important. Thank you, CG Wonder. That actually is helpful because it, it did feel a little like it was just like, and here's the Nega Zone. Here's. I would agree with that with the with CJ Wonder. Yeah. If things are better next year, I think it would be cool to just drop the shifts. <laughs> Go back to the old way. <laughs> the driver shifts? No, the time zone shift. Oh. I've only been... I So I haven't been watching Desert Bus for long enough to know what that is. Uh, so what happened was... Stuff would get a little loopy late at night. It used to just be, you know, Desert Bus for Hope. And some of the driver shifts would be... They did, like, 8, 12, and 24-hour shifts, mm -hmm. depending. Um, and yeah, late at night, it would just be, like, either desolate or loopy. Or they would schedule stuff for Alex uh, doing, like, a fake radio show called... Um, Derp line. Derp line. Uh, where people in the room would like do fake call-ins and he would answer. And that was kind of how Corp line got started. Uh, but they started calling it Zeta Shift. Just the overnight. And then they made t-shirts. And then everyone else wanted to have a shift so that Zeta wouldn't be special. <laughs> And now everything is just kind of really rigidly set where it's like the everyone who's on shift is tied to like that six hour block. And then they leave. <laughs> well, there was wasn't there like a, a interim where it was there was the entertainers are on shift, but then the driver was on a shift that would cross over. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And some of the site volunteers, they like the the shifts wouldn't all line up. It would be like the uh, engineering 
would get off on their shift and then like two hours later the site volunteers would swap out so they're like the different uh zones groups teams would would shift at different times but now it's just again it's like everyone's set to either like night watch so you're six to midnight yeah, I think a bit of, of tribalism is probably set in. A little bit. But that had already started with the introduction of Zeta anyways. Right. Which is why there's the, some of those uh, shirts that just say Zeta on them. They, they made those themselves. Oh yeah, I've seen Alex wear that one. Yeah, I don't have one. I ain't special. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this isn't looking right, but I'm not quite sure what to do about it. With your... With my orb. Ball. Yeah, it's like, this doesn't look like light. It just no. looks like... It just looks like it has a stripe. Add more paint. That's always the answer. Yeah, it's hard with that, like, really dark band. Which does exist. It is there. Yeah. Because I think, like... I need more... A, a softer transition, I think, between these two. Between those two? this white band and this darker band. It's like, I think the lighter band is bigger on the real object. Like, it extends further down. Oh, further down this way? Yeah. I think, yeah, between the light and the dark bands, it's kind of a hard edge, but then the dark towards the top is just slightly more gradual, I think. It's hard to say. But I'd say about 10 minutes left on that, and then I'll thank subs, and we can shut her down. All right. Well, I have 10 minutes to fix this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to watch. I'm not going to start anyone. My hands are sweaty. I need to be in perfect comfort to make At art. all times. At all times? No, just to make art. Oh, okay. I can be as uncomfortable as I want later. Hmm. Doesn't really look any better. Yeah, your light blue might be too light. And too saturated? I'm seeing kind of a gray blue. It is kind of a gray blue. I did do that on purpose, but. Oh, no, it, yours looks like a light blue, but I see on that arena a gray blue. 
Okay. I tried to make it more gray. Yeah. Now it's more blue. Hmm. I can't add another layer there until it dries. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna add a hole in the ocarina. Uh, uh. <laughs> What's so funny? Cat. Oh. Yes, I hope that's the cat and you're not like suffering a very <laughs> localized earthquake. Yes, it is the cat. She's sitting on top of the wire that connects the camera to the computer and bathing herself. Yep. is clearly a round ocarina. Yes. Sometimes art is about knowing when to stop. <laughs> I mean, you still got five minutes from the ten minutes I gave you. <laughs> so, if you want to stop, you can. Uh, I think it would be good at the end to get a better look at what you've done. Um, All right. I'm going to zoom mine out so we can I'll see close Corey's the shadow box. Thing. Yes. You lift, or will it get completely out of focus? I just want to look at the rock one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You want to look at the tassels? Okay, we can look at the tassels. Now we're looking at the tassels. Fuzzy. Don't look at that one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we can look at mine instead. Here. <laughs> yep. This one's a sponge. <laughs> what do you think is your most successful texture? Uh, the shiny orb. Looks looks shiny. <laughs> Why was that your most successful texture? It required the least work. I think you actually, I I think your blending on the that one is really good. The orb. On the red one, yeah. Yeah. I think it looks pretty correct. I think the real orb goes darker, but like I said, with the more light sources, it makes it harder. All right. Well. Back to the booth, and I will thank subs because I definitely had the sub notifier up. 
I didn't. Let me. There were some. There were. I saw them in chat. I just, yeah. I have to load a new tab. Uh, I would like to thank people starting with Frown, who sub for 56 months. Beowulf, 111 months, not driving buses club. That's what you think. <laughs> Zale250 for 68 months. Thank you. CG Wonder, 37 months. Congrats on another amazing bus. Thank you. Uh, Omdrastrix, 59 months. Very close to a one year. Neo of the Dark, 54 months. Cool. Hosk, 87 months. I have a button. Yes, you do. And you've given yourself a profile picture on Twitch that I've never seen before, but it's very good. <laughs> Drew 64, 37 months, almost at 64. Tara Mark Sarah Markov, 35 months, I'm back. Mage Mega Flycraft, 65 months. Today, in fact, I Googled 65 is the 23rd semi-prime. And no, my Googling did not include what a semi-prime is. I don't know. Uh Senior Pino. 10 months. Max Art, very entertainment. Thank you. The Fickle Cat, 38 months. Two months past those three years. Electrodyne, 40 months. Wow, that's a lot of months. It is. Degunner, 32 months. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. You too. Zed Alpha, 82 months. One more for the bingo card. Couldn't pick a username, 71 months. Whee! And that's everybody. How have you never seen that before? I wasn't looking, Hosk. I miss a lot of things that I'm not looking at. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's it. I don't know what I'm doing next week, but it was good to have you here. Thank you, Angel. Thanks. You can find me at twitch.tv slash AIamethyst, where I stream Painting of Pets every Thursday at 7.30 Pacific. Uh, right now I'm working on the dog. So you can see me make furry textures. Yes. That'll be fun. Um, you can also find me sometimes at other places. Uh, Yesbird Games, Tappy Toe Claws, Air Bubbles Cosplay, The Bard's Playhouse, uh, all over on the internet. Um, follow me on Twitter, AI Amethyst, for so long as that exists. And uh, I, I made a Hive account, so you can follow me there instead. <laughs> All right. Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Wait, where's my offline? Oh, gosh. I scrolled too far. Beep.